of the play is something that I've created um, with these yoga swings. I'm going to introduce the This is a swing. It's a sweatshirt material. It's really stretchy, really comfortable. We're going to make sure the swing is the right height for you and make sure the leg loops are in a comfortable place. So we'll adjust all this. We also have hand holds, which we'll use for some tricks here. So identify your hand holds, just follow me. Some people think this is a handhold when they're upside down and get confused. This is a daisy chain. So the daisy chains allow us to adjust the height of the equipment. You'll notice that the swing and the leg loops are being held by carabiners. They're very strong climbing carabiners. So these are all, the whole system is weighted for 500 pounds. So we're all good. But two people in the swing, it might be a little much, so we do one at a time. Um, like I said, let's check it and make sure it's the right height for us. So let's see the swing behind our back. Right underneath the arms. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn the hooks. So the anchor points are the parts that attach the swing to our bodies. Now, if my anchor point is my other arms, but I don't have my elbows down, it's very possible that the swing will slide out. So we keep our elbows bent and down. Awesome. Now again, if we are like this, it's fine. But then if we go to drop, the swing can release. So it's way important to keep the arms on the outside of the swing all times, even if we're reaching up. See, now if I drop, everyone try it with me. Now if I drop, the swing is holding on. So do exactly as I do. Reach up, grab for the swing, keep your elbows on the outside, so you're pulling them in, and now drop straight down. Awesome, good. Now let's do it the wrong way, <laughs> just to get practice. Bring your elbows on the inside, and now drop down. Totally different. Okay? So these are just little anchor points that once we do do it a few times, we realize how important it is because we want to have maximum fun, but also lots of safety when we play. Okay, so these are our, you can hire those if you want, you can adjust them. These are our leg loops. We're going to use them for our hands as well as for our feet and our knees. But we're like a little marionette. We're going to just use these to drop straight down and just feel how the swing holds us. Notice how much stretch there is. So just bounce a few times. Get your legs underneath you. Keep your weight in the swing. Just bounce. Come up and down a few times. There you go. Perfect. So keep your weight in the swing. And just come up and back down. Awesome. So you don't have to stand up all the way. Just keep your weight in the swing and just bounce. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Awesome. Now we're going to shift from side to side a little bit. Let the swing hold us the whole time. Right? We're just kind of playing and exploring the space. We're going to have lots of time to play today in the workshop. We have everybody here is able to assist as well as to have fun. So if you're not sure what to do, you can also look around or ask somebody, and then we're all here to help. Okay? So, so these are just making little circles. So I'm pressing back, and then I'm shifting from side to side. Cool. Now notice the swing is behind the heart. Just a little bit of a back bend. You don't have to stand up. You can just lean back. Open up the heart. Lean back even more. So press back. Lean back with your heart. Thank you. There you are. Bring your shoulders down your back. Engage your lats. There you go. Cool. So we want to really use the swing to support us in back bends and inversions. So if the swing goes up really high, let's do it the wrong way. The, ear, the shoulders will be by the ears. Right? Doesn't even look that great if you look around. <laughs> um, what's going on? So engage your lats, lean back. Ah, there we go. Open up the heart. There's like a sweet spot right underneath the shoulder, shoulder blades where it's going to hold us. There we go. So practice adjusting the swing without standing up. Just keep your weight in the swing and lean back. So there's going to be a lot of different poses where we're not going to have our feet on the ground, so we're going to be able to adjust it without getting up. Awesome. And just take some time to get used to the swing. Really enjoy being uplifted. Feel how the spine is being traction out of the pelvis. And now we have more space in the vertebrae right in the body. Can you feel that? Let's twist a little bit from side to side as well. Throwing our legs like unusually side to side. Awesome. So my feet are still wide. I'm just turning one knee in at a time. Good. Beautiful. And yeah, 
we can all actually turn that foot all the way down to the ground like we're coming into a lunge. Nice. Deep breath, hip stretch. Good. And just play in the space. There's no wrong way to do it when it comes to the moves. We just want to make sure we have the support and the anchor points. And then we explore. We want to start to feel the spiraling or the spherical nature of our body. Really good. Now we're going to bring our legs straight in front of us. Toes touching, straight legs. Now let's let go of the, uh, the leg loops. Let's just lean back. So now we're just coming out with the um, eagle wings. Fingertips to the sides. Now if you need to support your neck, you can bend your elbows and clasp your fingers behind your neck. Okay. Bring your arms out wide again, and then swing them over your head. So you can clasp your fingers or just have parallel arms. And sway a little bit from side to side. And big back bend. And then like we're swimming, we're going to spin our hands back to the front of our bodies, wide. And then sit down. Alan, just physical cues, OK? Awesome. Let's stay. Cool. Reaching up. And wide. Awesome. Swim back down again. Namaste. We drop the hips at the same time. Really good. Beautiful. And wide. This would be what I did in that swing. You can just show clarity and just have a little here as well. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of other visual. Beautiful. So let's do that a few more times if it feels good on your body. If there's any place that you want to stop, like if you're like, oh yeah stretch I need today. Or I really like, this, whenever I clasp my hands behind my head, I call this chillaxing. I can hang out here. Or if you like the full back bend, the full extension, then go ahead and bring the arms straight overhead. And just take a moment to explore and play. Which one of the poses feels right for you today? Just know that they're all available. Nice. Supported back bends. It's a miracle. This is really why I created this swing, so we would feel a little bit more at home in back bends and inversions, and be able to do them and go deeper than we would if we were just on the ground. Okay? Beautiful. Let's come back into our semi squat. I'm using this as like a neutralizing pose, so whenever you need a break, just come back to here. Because the swing is still holding you up, but you can notice that you can put most of the weight in your legs. So the underarms are going to have to get used to this kind of pressure. So that's one of the ways to take pressure off, is just come in and kind of stand. Okay? Good. Now if I don't utilize the leg loops, they tend to have a little bit of momentum and can get a little whack. <laughs> so I usually do the marionette hands. And we're going to come to shifting from side to side again. I'd like to bring my legs a little bit wider than our circles and press into a warrior two. Does everybody get to yoga? So in warrior two, my knee and my ankle are in one straight line. Good. Perfect. And then I'm going to look over my foot fingertips. Kind of fierce, right? Nice straight lines of energy. And now to switch, I'm going to just lean back. I kind of do this little thing with my hands because I like to flourish. <laughs> and I come to the other side. Because right? the whole idea is that we get to swim, right? So switch back and forth a few times and just notice what it's like to come into the warriors with the support of the swing. Just let it feel good on the body. Nice. Mm -hmm. Alan, will you lower that down for us? No problem. While we're waiting for our friend, we're just going to do a few more shifting from side to side. And I want you to add a little bit of a bounce, of a pulse in your warrior two. So if we can all go in the same direction, that's great. But if not, that's totally fine too. Just hang out here and feel what happens in your hip flexor, your inner thigh. And we pulse. Nice. And then when you're ready, Instead of up. No, the one that's in your hand. Bring it down instead of up. Down. 
side to side, but we're grounding. So we can actually look down and follow and trace the circular motion of the mat from side to side. Beautiful. Now really gently, we're going to just pulse straight down. So imagine your heart kissing the ground. We're going to keep this long line of energy from the tailbone to the crown of the head. So don't drop the head. You're not like looking up at your friends unless you're checking me out every once in a while. Just keep the crown of your head moving towards the center of the room and your tailbone moving out to outside the dome, right? Following the spherical nature of the space. So release your right arm, arm down. Keep your left elbow hooked. My first posture is a hand right underneath the heart. If this is a big enough stretch for you, stay here. And if you'd like to go deeper, I want you to look up towards the sky and as you twist, take your right hand and reach for the left ankle. Now just notice that you have a different wide straddle than when you're doing regular yoga on the floor because your elbow is helping you to deepen the twist. So see what happens when you pull your elbow down towards your heart. So keep your, your fist in towards your shoulder so it's nice and tight and then pull on the swing to deepen the pose. Keep the hips square, so let it come from the chest. Beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna look forward towards the center of the room. Bring your left arm overhead. So you just twist the swing overhead. Let it be in your hand. There you go. Nice. Now you're gonna thread your right hand through into that little space. Cool. So hands together, whatever class feels right, and drop the chest again. Just get a big shoulder opener here. Does anybody have any shoulder pain or discomfort? No? Not with this. Great. So in general, uh, you can have your friends bend their elbows and still get a great chest opener. So everybody bend your elbows and give it a try. So you're holding on to the swing. That's why that nice little knot there kind of helps, right? And now straighten your arms again. Now notice you can pulse here where you can press your arms strongly down to lift your body up. Now notice you can do this really easy. Right? And just come up. Or we can really engage. Like press, press, press. And notice we're using all these crazy muscles under the arms that we don't normally use. Mm -hmm. It can be quite a strengthening exercise. Or we can be totally chill about it. Just hang. Right? So decide if you want to do more strengthening today or if you just want to do more opening and stretching. So cater the class towards your own needs. Okay, so I'm going to look up. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to bring it on top of the X. Hook with the elbow, and then you're in second side. So the hand is right underneath the heart. Yeah. <laughs> hand is under the heart, and twist. So if you want to look up towards the side, go deeper, let the left hand grab to the right ankle, and stretch. Pull down with your right elbow. And then make a fist and pull down, deepen, Square the hips. Oh, really good. Nice little line of energy. Two deep breaths here. Now one last time we're gonna look up, bring our right hand overhead, clasp with both hands, and pulse. Again, just 
side. So you want to do more stretch and more strength. Eventually, you're going to press all the way up the stair. motion from side to side here, and you'll be like, oh, wow, there are my hip flexors. Um, there is a sweet spot in the hips, and you kind of have to wiggle until you find it. Now, if we do, so you're already there, Clarity, that's totally fine. If we take our feet off the ground, we keep our arms down, folded leaf is where we're just dangling. So this is like basically our first inversion. So this is a restorative inversion where we're not doing much, we're just hanging out, literally. So what we can do here is we can kind of swim the legs a little bit, just have them explore the space, and just notice how that pressure and that intensity in the hip starts to open up the fascia there. It's supposed to be intense. And just notice if you bring your feet on the ground, you kind of release a little bit of that tension in the hips, right? So just play at whatever level it's good for you today to explore those poses. So from our folded leaf, we are, we're all going to plant our feet and press back into a V-shape to come into a first down dog. So again, we're exploring how it feels to do some of the yoga translations. So press your hands back so your heart comes down towards the ground. And then energetically draw the heels down. It doesn't matter if the heels are touching, you're just grounding them virtually. Awesome. So arch and open up the chest. It's a V shape in the body. So if we're in a U, push back so you're in a V. Awesome. And then we're just going to let ourselves come into like a chaturanga arms where we're leaning forward. So we come up on our tippy toes. And then we're pressing back again. So this would be like our salutation translation. So come forward, plank, and then press back. So we go from pretending like our heels are touching onto our tippy toes with straight arms. Beautiful. And now let's actually turn this into a cat cow too. It's called the cat meow. So we're going to come forward, arch, open, inhale, exhale, round, press back. So arching and opening. So we don't normally do that in a plank, so we're doing a little, what I call meow. meow. And then tap. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Just a few more of these. This should feel really good on the spine. Inhale up. You can even come up onto your fingertips and your toes. Yeah, exhale back. Ground in, so you're kind of looking towards your navel. Inhale, look up towards the sky. Very good. Exhale. Rounded. Beautiful. One more time. Inhale up. And exhale back. Uh, you're just hang again. So let your feet come up off the ground. Bend your knees. Come onto your forearms. And just hang out. Now just notice you're kind of coming into a headstand here, right? Knees are going to be low. Keep bend your knees. Yeah, keep your knees low. And then come onto your forearms. Oh. Really good. <laughs> you gotta land your body. I know. Which part? 
I know, down is still down, which we'll get into, because it's like very, down is still towards the ground, and then like, yeah, it's hilarious, but it's good. We're creating new circuitry. Yes. <laughs> good for us. All right, so again, inversions are really challenging for people, so this gives us an opportunity to stay in like a 10 minute headstand, which we wouldn't be able to do without the swing holding us up, right? So we're just practicing the back bends and inversions there's lots of other fun things we do, but those are the main poses that I want to explore and to really experiment with. Oh, so after a little pause there, we're going to press back one more time. Down dog. Now we're going to add a little something new. So from down dog, we're going to come into upside down dog. So upside down dog is when you start to lift your feet up off the ground and wide. Yeah. Kind of keep them level with the hips to begin. So up and wide. Now notice if I bring them up and straight together, I can start to lose the yoga swing. So up and wide is actually important because our anchor point is at the hips, right? So from here, so this is upside down dog number one, or what I call up dog. And then upside down dog number two is where you hook your feet from outside in. Yes. So hook your feet outside in. Beautiful. And now press your chest down towards the ground. Nice. This should feel really, really good. Now from upside down dog, I want us to pull ourselves forward into a handstand. There we go. So it's almost like a scorpion handstand. Awesome. Really good. And now press back again. Again, we're just moving nice and slow. Upside down dog. Handstand. Inhaling up. Exhaling back. Inhaling up, and exhaling back. Emily, you're welcome to jump into the swing if you want to practice. Okay. Now we're going to stay in handstand, and I'm just going to have you guys tuck. So a tuck is really simple. Your, your feet stay hooked. You just pull your hips over your shoulders, and then back to handstand again. So we're practicing, right? Practicing tucking and getting our whole body stacked. Shoulders, hips, wrists. Awesome. Beautiful. Again, pulling in. Tuck. Exhale. Let it go. Awesome. So those are my handstand preparations. Isn't that cool? So we're going to keep our right foot hooked. We're going to release our left leg straight out. Out and to the side, right? So we got to keep our leg wide. Good. So level with the earth as much as possible. That just gives us a little bit more support. And then we're going to press back. So upside down dog, right? Heart towards the ground. Inhale, pull forward. And then at the same time, pull that knee into elbow. Nice core strengthening there. Awesome. Pull your knee into your elbow. <laughs> this knee, mm -hmm. bring it down. Straighten your arms. Come into handstand arms. Nice. Pull your knee towards your elbow. There you go. Press back. Awesome. Straight arms, chest kissing the ground, same leg, knee to elbow. So as you're pulling forward into handstand arms, you engage your core. Nice. So we're going nice and slow, but if you want, you can use momentum and pick up the pace a little bit. So try that. At your own pace, just take a nice slow with your neighbors. When you <laughs> inhale, you pull forward, knee to elbow. When you exhale, sink back, upside down dog. One like it. Nice. Good job, everybody. How does that feel? A little intense? <laughs> You're like, I feel my butt. Awesome. Let's hook both legs again and switch sides. So, right leg is out, straight, level with the hip. It's okay to keep a bent knee if you need as well. Press back, upside down dog, pull forward, and stand arms, and then knee comes in. So, it's one fluid movement. When we press back, we straighten the leg. When we pull forward, we bend the knee. Obviously, the knee is not going to touch the elbow. We're just pretending. <laughs> but it's, it's something to hope for. <laughs> One day. Oh, the swing is going to definitely give us some resistance there, and we really engage both the glutes and the core and the flexor. Strengthen it this way. And then let's pick up the pace again. So now we're just using momentum, right? So if we just pull forward, kind of the uh, pendulum.
pendulum swing of the swing itself is creating the movement. Harmonics. Beautiful. Both legs hooked outside in. Really good. Drop down. So now we're using kind of like how we use down dog as a resting pose. We're coming into a dolphin and we're just using this as our resting. So I'm arched and open, like as if I'm moving into a forearm scan, but you could also be completely relaxed and tuck your chin into your chest. Just let this be a restorative. <sighs> Deep cleansing breaths. And then when you're ready, you're slowly going to bend your knees, bring them towards one another, and then straighten your legs and find your toes reaching the ground again. Okay. Walk forward into a wide straddle. Wide straddle with our hips over our ankles. And then it's going to be intense. If you want to grab your ankles, you can pull straight down one more time. Awesome. So now we're going to start to look up. Keep the weight in the swing. Look up, walk forward. Keep walking forward. Keep walking forward. Keep walking forward. Catch the other side. Keep walking forward down. Yeah. 